smart you got the floor. Yeah. What's up, people? Another Wednesday. Welcome to Man Them Chat. This week we've got a very special speaker in the house. Yes, we've got Yvonne Michelle, CEO and founder of Global Empowerment Movement and the GEM Academy. She's a singer, a motivational speaker, an author, podcaster, TV and radio presenter, empowerment coach, and a few things more. But I can't write them down. Bit of paper's not big enough. Welcome to Man Lemon Chat, Yvonne. Glad you're here. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hi, Yvonne. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm all right. I just need to get a little comfortable. Yeah. What is going on in my life right now? But thank you guys. Thank you for inviting me back on the Man Name Chat. Been looking forward to this from the last chat that we had around relationships. Um, So today I wanted to find out how you guys are feeling how how are you feeling about relationships are we happy to talk about relationships or we do we want to do a sidestep no that's fine relationships is that's a good that's a good topic well, that's a good start it is a good start because if you had said can we sidestep the answer would have been no <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about relationships, right? Okay. So, um, yeah, so as I said, thanks for having me back. And it's always good to to be in a room full of men. And I do believe I am the only female here today, right? Yeah, am I the only female? Nope. No? Okay. Ladies. Yeah, friend, they are. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so okay, so today, what I want to uh, I want to focus on. So we did speak last time on what I want to focus on is how we actually build a successful relationship. Now, when I mean relationships, I am talking about boyfriend and girlfriend, or two people, if we're going to be politically correct, two people. Um, but also, I want to talk about how we build relationships with each other. And one of the things that I observed coming on early uh, of the chat is how well connected you guys are and how you look out for each other. And so, and how this is really building a community of men. So I really wanted to applaud you for that because we are told as women that men don't like to talk. We are told that, you know, apart from the barbershop situation, men don't really chat with each other. They just keep everything to themselves. So to to come in and and be on mute, but observe the conversation was really, really nice and very inspiring. So I just want to applaud all of you for what you are creating here. And if no one has told you so, let me come here for tell you that today, right? That well done, well done. Um, This is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, so it's not women, just the women who are having these little conversations that men are. And so today I really want to focus on empowering you and um, so we can kind of get some insight as to what the issues are. So I will start by saying on social media, and I'm going to focus on social media, I see a lot of conversations going on around men and women. Um, And it it seems to be getting worse rather than better in terms of how we are communicating, how we are talking about each other, how we are expressing how we feel about each other. So I really wanted to tackle that today because as far as I'm aware, this, this, this group is mature people And um, I I do see a lot of younger men talking about how to have relationships with with women. And because I believe that the reason why a lot of the issues 
are going on around in our youth that the reasons why they are there is because we as the elders are not in place we have not done what we were supposed to we have been otherwise minded and a lot of the time we've been quite selfish within ourselves and doing what we want to do rather than looking at the bigger picture as to how that's affecting the younger ones coming up and the messages our actions are giving them for how they're supposed to move forward. Sure. I don't know how any of you feel about that, but that's very much um, something that's in the forefront of my mind. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Who said that? Was that you, Spencer? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's something that I believe that we can change. It's not too late to change. But I do believe that we have to step up as the elders now because we've come through COVID, we've come through many and many a thing. And the elders are now retiring. They're like kind of taking a, a step aside. And that this is, leaves room for us, as I would say, those who are 50 and change to get into position, right? And those of you who are 48 and 49, that includes you. Anybody under over the age of 45, you are not exempt from this. You are the, in the 50 <laughs> and change category, right? Yeah. Okay. So, right. So my first question is, are there any single men on here? And I just want you to, um, there's no, I'm not going to call you out. Well, I might do, but, you know, um, if you just put that on the chat, if you can just click to say yes or no, if you are a single man. And when I mean single, I don't mean singlish. I mean single, as in the whole, as, as in, you know, yes, I'm seeing. Okay, wonderful. So there's only one man in here called Sydney who's saying yes. So he's the only single person. Because this is this has to be about honesty. I'm not going to call you out, really. Ish. There's more, man. Huh? There's more. There's got to be more. I don't believe that there's only one. No, you've got another oh, one. Oh, two. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Victor. It's Victor, isn't it? Yeah? Another one there, yeah. Okay. That's it. Two out of 12 people in here. Okay, that's fine. So, right, so to those of you who are in relationships, how many of you are in happy relationships? <laughs> I'm like, oh God, is this on YouTube? Is this on no. Can no. I say no. this? Is there such a thing? Is there, is there such, such a thing? Is there such a thing? For real. Ah, well, okay. Well, it's so, all right. so Mark is saying, is there it's such a, a thing? It's a balance. You can put a figure 50 50 sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you can put the person, the emoji with the hand up like this, like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you define yeah. happy as? I'll, I'll, whatever I'll happy say... is to you. <laughs> it's whatever happy is to you. Okay. So there is. Sometimes. I, sometimes. I, 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 me personally, I think the majority of the time. My, I'm happy in my relationship. Obviously, there's a, uh, you know, there's certain times when there may be, you know, little, uh, you, you know, know, and I don't want to say argument, disagreements. Okay. Yeah, I'll say the same still. The same. Yeah. More time is balanced. After, you know? after, 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 after you want people to admit this now on, um, on live, um, Yvonne, Maybe there might be a few single men on here after. Well, no, because <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if that's the case, I will say this. If that is the case, then the basis of your relationship wasn't solid in the first place. Because if anything, this should bring about conversation. So if your partner's watching and, the, and there's questioning, oh, you said you wasn't happy all the time, that then brings... Um, a platform for a conversation what makes you happy what makes you unhappy which is you know what do you need from you know as, as a woman's perspective what do you need from me as a woman 
from a man's perspective, what do you need from me as your man? It's These... about communication, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. It does. It absolutely does. Do you guys have paper and pens at all? Mm. Yeah. I have. Okay. Right. So if you get a piece of paper and a pen, I just want you to draw a line down the middle of this paper and you're going to put um, needed, not needed. And I want you to write down what you think are the key components for a successful relationship. And then on the other side, it's going to be the opposite. So on the left, we want to put all the things that are not, um, that don't make up a good, all the components that don't make up a good relationship. And on your right, you're going to put down all of the things that you think make up a healthy relationship what the components are for you are we going to discuss then now the reason why i say for you while you're writing it down the reason why i say for you is because we're all different and we all require different things our makeup our personality is different and so what you might need as a man to another man is completely different. And what we do as a collective of people is we just think it's all of these. Because I said it's X, Y, and Z, then that's how it should be. But actually you're A, B, and C. That's what makes you tick. That's what makes you happy. That's what makes you thrive. That makes, this is what makes you feel good about you. Because when you're in a relationship, the relation has to be good and it has to be balanced. Like a ship is on water, it floats and it balances. And that's how a relationship is supposed to be. And we know that sometimes the tide could be a bit rough. But in that roughness, the boat still stays afloat. You like that analogy, in it? Right. Right? But what's happening in our community <laughs> is the ships are sinking. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Sika, ship yeah. sink, the ships are sinking. So we have to look at these things of why is the ship sinking after 25 years, 20 years, 15 years, 10 years? Why are the ship sinking? So write down, I want you to, if you, when you get to, a good number, let's say 10, 10 components for a healthy relationship you need to make your relationship work. And you can put anything, there's no right, no wrong answer, because this is about you. <laughs> I'm smiling for you. Those of you who've got your faces on the screen, it's so funny. But I love that, the fact that you're here and I can see you. <laughs> you want me to do this? No. Yes, Arlene. <laughs> Come on now. You yes, you must take part. I'm smart because he's funny about you being in this. Brother, brother, we are set. Mm, yeah. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> yeah, <we're not. laughs> yeah, you know why I, I say yes, Arlene, because I want to see the <laughs> contrast. I want to see if it's right. a it, it's the balance. Mm. It's a balance, okay. yeah. Yeah, you see? yeah, man. Yeah. The ship has to float. Yeah. Mm. So they were coming to throw that dinghy in the life something. Well on to that. All right, how are we getting I'm on? Ready. We're doing good. Right, okay. So I want you guys to not to feel shy, because I want this to, uh, this is like a a dialogue, it's not a monologue, right? So it's not for me to sit here and be chatting to you all the time. I want some answers, some feedback from you, your thoughts. Uh -huh. um, many times I've heard men say the women talk too much and they don't get a chance to say what they have to say. So tonight is your chance to talk your truth, right? So, okay. So I'm going to go by 
I'm just going to ask the names. I'm going to go by how it is on my screen. So the first person is um, the host, is Skipper. I call you Skipper. Is that right to call you Skipper? I know it's Spencer, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> okay, that's I'm annoying. Anyway. Yeah. Right. So give me some of the, give me three components that are not conducive to a successful relationship for you. Not conducive, yeah? Yeah. All right. Lack of understanding and patience. That's two. Understanding, patience. Yeah. Lack of communication. Yeah. Um, not spending quality time together. Yeah. And um, not being family orientated. Okay. Okay. And what are, what are the components that you need? <laughs> well, the opposite of that, communication, spending quality time together, loyalty, uh, like-mindedness, uh, patience and understanding, and being family orientated. Right. You said, you said all apart from two. Uh, I've got written five. down here as well. Oh, okay. You said two and three, and he said about ten. That's all right. Never, it's all right. Because now I'm going to say, how, how many of has any of you got any different? It's fine, because this is human nature. We hear what we hear, and it's fine. So I want to know if anyone's got anything different from those. I've got non-understanding, patience, communication, quality time, and being family orientated. Has anyone got anything different? Yeah. Yep, go for it. I, I had, I had him. Go on. Side, we doing for? We, okay, doing let's go sides? to let's go to Victor, and then we're going to come to you, Marvin. Uh, we, do you want both sides or? Yeah. Which one first? Uh, not first. Not needed. Uh, money, aggravation, drama, <laughs> stupidity, <laughs> arrogance. Lies and bullets. A list. Arrogance. Lies and bullying. Right. Okay. And what was, what's the other side? Uh, trust. <laughs> commitment. Mystery. Intelligence. Mystery. Yeah. Uh, ambition. And. Uh, Refreshment, being refreshing. Refreshing. Mm, okay. That one needs explaining. Okay, Marvin, let's go to you. Have you got anything different? To be honest. To be honest? Not really. To be honest, I, I had, yeah, I said, um, obviously, honesty. Um, this is what's, what would be needed, yeah? yeah. Um, sharing common interests, you know, having... Uh, being of like minds yeah and after after that most of them spencer said and victor just said as well the other ones that i had down as well okay cool okay so has anyone else those of you who i can't see i have i've got um jealousy okay yeah i've got things like you know like you know when someone's secretive about their finances and stuff like that? Right, secrecy. Money, money of money, yeah. Controlling. Uh, I'll put the same as the other guys, like, not on the same path, you know, like, yeah. Okay. And support, lack of support. Lack of support. And I put dishonesty, but that could come in a lot of stuff. Okay, lovely. Anyone else got anything different? Yeah, I've, I have a few bits which have already been covered, but a sense of feeling supported. Okay. Uh, respect for boundaries. Ah. Uh, because I always see relationship as a triangle. Me, us, and you. So you need to know your your place within that 
triangle. Um, Self-respect. Yeah. And easy to talk to or talk with. Lovely. Thank you for that, Desmond. Anyone else? Can I just say, um, yes. I think like you should always be yourself. Um, and it's good to feel safe in a relationship. Yeah. Also, like, have a bit of, well, just like what Desmond said, the equality side and meeting each other halfway. And sharing, I guess, so that's about it. Okay. Right. So these are really, really, really interesting answers. Some are typical because we're human beings, but some, and, and to just see, um, I'm glad that I think it was Desmond who came in and said, support, respect boundaries, self-respect, and they're easy to talk to. Reason why I'm pulling Desmond's out is because those four things are very similar. Um, there's a couple of things in there that Arlene had said, she, and she'd mentioned some of the other stuff. But I, I pull out Desmond because it, his answers are more emotional, emotionally connected to what a woman would say, right? And this is how we are so different, women and men, because our expectation is somewhat different in a relationship. We, we are, when they say men are from Mars and women are from Venus, we're from somewhere and it's different. I don't know if it's Mars and Venus. I don't know where it is, but there are some differences in how we respond and react to each other. So um, who said about bullying? Somebody said that. Can't remember who it was. I think that was that was black. I said controlling and power. Like, yes, but somebody else said about it was um blaps. I think it was. I think nah, it was I just said about. Did you bullying. not say that? Somebody nah. said lies, I, lies and bullet. I didn't want to say bullet. Oh, I see. Bovine defecation. I didn't oh. want to say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I thought you said swear. bullying. Okay. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. Bye, bad. I I heard it different to you. So. For real. But you can say bullying as well. That's fine. Okay. Because I'm a, I've got anti-bullying groups. So yeah, anti, yeah, bullying would can come in uh, through your mind, your body, and your spirit. So yeah, I won't be standing for that. Well, uh, I, won't I, be, I won't be bullied. You won't be bullied. No, no, it's impossible to be bullied. To be bullied me, and so I won't be bullying her. I, I was going to ask how many of the men on here have been bullied by a woman? And I'm not talking about pres your present relationship, but I just want to know just that you feel that she's bullying you, trying to bully. Is that something that's happened to anybody on this group? Yeah, man. What? Yeah, I, I would say, I would say yes. Women, 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 women sometimes will bully to get their way. They, they've got their weaponry and they know what it is. Explain. Well, Just give, give, children, children well, are explain. Used, give some context to it. Fair enough. Children are used sometimes uh, to bully uh, a person into doing what they want to, they want to get done. I've had a lot of uh, people come to me saying that they're being manipulated. They feel like they're being controlled uh, because they haven't got the same level of understanding about the woman as the woman does about them because they're on a more cerebral, the woman are on a more cerebral path than the man. So the man just reacts to what the woman says or does. And most of the time when they'd be using the children as a weapon, it gets to the, the, the emotional pain of the man and they can't handle it. So they react physically. And so the woman can say they're being bullied, but in fact, who was bullying who comes down to uh, match emotional um, empathy that we have for each other. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I think I've, I've experienced manipulation. Wow. Manipulative tactics. Wow. We find yeah. out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, manipulative tactics. Like Mark says, there's going to be trouble. Yeah, you know, isn't it? Sydney, did you <laughs> want to say something? You had your hands up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Uh, let me just uh, move away from where I am. Not for tiny ears. Ear. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I also wanted to say yes, uh, so, something about the bullying that we, we, we were talking about. And yes, yes. Um, I've been in a in a situation where I I, I have felt uh, bullied in my relationship. Is that okay? Thank you for that. Thank you guys for your honesty. Now I'm going to make a disclaimer here. So for those of you who are watching this, and those of you who are in relationships with any of these men, what they say to, on this platform today does not necessarily mean they are talking about you right and i'm saying that because life is not just about our partners presently we had all of us every single one of us on this platform i'm sure has had a life before they were with their partner right is yes. that fair to say guys so yes. i'm not no, match up nothing and i'm just making that <laughs> i'm just making that disclaimer here because we, people we, we don't grow unless we talk. Communication, right, is one of the key factors or, or key components of a successful relationship. If there is no communication, and when I talk about communication, it's not just two people talking at each other. It's actually having understanding where you can come to a compromise and say, right, this is how we're moving forward. So unless you are in that realm, nothing will change. And so you can communicate, you can be screaming the odds at each other. That's still communicating. But whether that's, you know, whether that's good communication, successful communication, that, that remains to be seen. Desmond, you've got your hand up. Do you want to say something? I just wanted to um, add to the fact that I think it, most people experience bullying at some time in their lives, and I'm no exception. But it's how you respond to bullying, I think, that makes the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. I absolutely agree, 100%. So, so we know that men, women have said that men have bullied them for a long time. Men are now, now speaking out and saying, actually, I'm being manipulated, I'm being bullied. And so, so these are the things, this is one of the reasons why we have this man them chat, so we can chat about these things. So manipulation, what does that look like to you? You know, um, in terms of someone bullying you, what does that look like to you? Are you fearful? Are, you know, I see Victor's got his hand up. So are you gonna answer the question? Yeah, I was just wondering if everyone's seen the recent video um, went viral about a, a man that was bringing a child to his um, baby mother's yard, but she has three children from other men as well, for, but not from this guy. He only bought food for his own. So she decides she's going to make a video of him to out him about him only bringing food for his one and not for the whole <coughs> of the other children that weren't his. And I was just wondered, that's the kind of thing that is bullying, you see what I'm saying? And it went viral because a lot of people were cussing her out. So I just wondered how you feel about that, if everyone saw the video anyway, to even chat about it, but we could chat yeah, about that, it. Yeah, that's oh, actually, it. there was another video that I was gonna bring up, but I will go to that one, Victor, because it was a good video. Um, because she had men and women, like, just out in her. Um, I don't know what that was about, but here's, here's the thing on that one. Both of them are wrong. Both. Because, and I say that because my interest in that relationship mm -hmm. is only the children. And the children are the ones who are suffering in this. 
no one else. She looks like a damn ass and so does he. But my thing is, is, you know, yes, she was absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. I'm calling it out. She should never have done that. Never. I saw a second video where she said when they were together, he provided for her other children. The other children were there when she, he bought the meal. So from the child's point of view, and I'm only going from the child's point of view, the child is seeing that the person was nice to them and now all of a sudden he's not being nice and he's only focusing on one. That's going to have an impact on those other children that are not there. And that's why I say the only ones who suffer here is the children. And what I see in both case scenarios is ego. That's what I see. And this is what is killing our relationship. So the ego comes in like somebody coming to shoot a hole in the boat. And the boat now is taking in water and it's just going down and down. And it's, if you ever see a boat sink, it's not a quick thing. It's very slow. It takes time for the water to come in and it infests the underneath of the boat that you can't necessarily see because it's underneath. And so this is what happens in our relationships. The analogy is strong here. This is what happens in our relationships. We get into relationships, things start to happen and the ego takes. Anyway, I'm gonna come back to the ego. Anyway, so what I wanna do is I want you to write down these. These are the key components of relationships for you to ponder on when I'm offline. Are we ready? Trust. And my thing is in order for you to trust, you must first trust yourself wholeheartedly. Choices and all, right? Trust. Second one, communication. Third one. Am I going too fast? Okay, cool. Respect. Okay. Next one, fourth one, honesty. And that means even when it hurts. One, two, three, four, five. Third, fifth one, empathy. Somebody mentioned empathy before. Number six, affection. Number seven, understanding. Number eight is mutual respect. So you have respect of oneself, and then you have mutual respect. Number nine, compromise. And number 10 is common interest. Now, number 10, I'm putting that as a general relationship. But if we were talking about relationship between man and people, two people, or three, however you want to play it, the, the tenth one would be sex. Because we cannot leave that out. And when I say sex, I mean intimacy. So let me clarify when I talk about sex, I mean intimacy. So we can put like a slash, sex, intimacy. So these are the 10 components that every successful relationship has to have. Otherwise it won't work. Otherwise you're gonna be knocking heads. Otherwise you're gonna be having umpteen amounts of 
heated discussions. And that is because each person wants to be right. Okay. So my next question to you is, what do you need as a man? What do you need? What is it that you need? What is it you need to feel like a king? What is it that you need? If there's one thing out of all of those things, what would it be? A man, I think a man always want, uh, wants to feel wanted and needed. Okay. That's interesting because it's not actually on the list, but it's a good one. And, and why do you think that is, Marvin? Why do you think men mm -hmm. need to be wanted or needed? Whether, it, whether, it's that, whether it's down to our ego, you know, or, you know, us feeling adequate or inadequate, or I, I'm not sure what it is, but that, I think that's very important. And, and in these days, I think man and woman is the same. I, I don't think we understand our place and our roles as the man, as the woman. Understand the woman, um, see, I, saying this now may sound sexist when you say that, when you say, you know, a woman must know her place. A man must know his place as well. You understand? And according, like I say, according to the roles and the duty of the male, the female, there's the, there, there's, we've, we've forgotten our roles. There's a lack of understanding when it comes to, you know, what is the roles and the duty of the woman, especially if kids is involved? Okay. What is the roles and the duty of the man? Very important. Okay, and I want like you... The man wants to feel wanted. He wants to... Needed. So, so just to throw something out, because I want you to quantify what you mean by their place. What does it look like? Their place in... Uh, well, first... Yeah. But first thing is, like I said, the, if, if we go back to, like, I'm talking about from my grandmother. My grandmother died nine years ago, 102 years old. And as, as long as recent as before she died, I can remember her saying this. A woman has her place. A man has her place. Now, if, we, if we're going back to the natural order, the man should be the breadwinner, the provider. You know, he's the protector. He's the disciplinarian. You know, he's the companion, he's, he, he, he's the friend, you know, to the woman. You understand? The woman, um, her duty, I feel, would be more because the man's out looking the bread. You know, she, she runs the home. She organizes the home. She keeps it, you know, in order. Of course, she must obviously nurture the child. You understand? Discipline the child. But the discipline of the child is going to come on a mutual agreement really from mother and father because the woman has to know his 23 chromosomes from her, 23 chromosomes from the father that make this child. Do you understand? So many fathers in these times are undermined. Do you understand? They, they try and implement certain authorities and discipline on the child. And, you know, behind the dad's back, you know, cause the mom's dealing with love and compassion and always wants to be the friend, you know, the dad gets undermined which grows a lack of respect through her and will come into the child also. You understand? I've gone, I've gone into a few more areas there still, but okay. Thank you know you. what I mean? It's very, it's very important. The man, we've got to eat. We've, sorry, I'll leave it there, yeah. No, thank you for that, Marvin. I, and I want to talk, because Desmond's got his hand up, so I'm going to bring Desmond in. But I actually want to hear what the other men have got to say, if they mm. agree, if they disagree, or what have you not. Desmond, do you uh, want to because okay. Desmond's had his hand up for a while. Oh. Sorry, is it my turn? Yes. Oh, well, in relation to um, what Marvin was saying, um, as someone who is almost 70, I think since the 60s, there's been a massive change in the sort of a, traditional role of male and female in society. And that's partly due to technology and to a lot of other things, uh, birth control and 
the feminist movement and the sort of male fragility. And I, I, I don't really get it, some of it these days, because there are, particularly in the African Caribbean community, there are more females now earning more than male. And there are more female that are head of the household compared to any other group. And there's a high percentage of male that are unemployed, underemployed, or in prison. So to talk of a traditional role when it comes to African Caribbean, I do find that a little bit confusing. So I think it goes back to the ingredient of a good relationship. Um, and I guess I'm a beta male because I tend to reflect on a lot of these things. And I am, I am sort of a empathic to the role of women in society because I was a single parent child and I empathize with the role that I see my mother had to play. Yes. And when it comes to discipline and providing, well, <laughs> there wasn't a dad around to do that. So I, I don't know what it is that a man is supposed to do in a family because there wasn't that role model there for me. So I tend to see women as rightful rulers and carers. So I prefer that kind of analogy. Okay, thank you, Desmond. Thank you very much for that. Um, and thank you for your honesty as well. Um, I'm going to bring Victor in and then I'm going to speak. So go, Victor. Um, my parents were awesome. I was brought up by two, a king and a queen. I got wisdom from both. I brought my children up in the same method. Um, all the relationships I've had, I've ticked off everything that you said is mainly required in a, in a good relationship, and I ticked them all off in all the relationships I've had. The reasons why they broke down or reasons why they came to an end are completely out of these reasons. Yeah, and uh, and are very good reasons. Um, but when I'm talking about, when you're asking about what does a man need or what do I personally need? If I'm the king, then you're the queen, then we both have to understand we're here to bring up our sibling, our daughters, sorry, our children. And um, we both need to have an understanding. If my, my mum and dad, if you're going to go to breadwinner, like uh, Marvin was saying, mum and dad had to go out and had work. So they were both the breadwinner, you see what I'm saying? There wasn't any like hierarchy in the, in the house. It was just like, uh, they both discussed how I was going to get a beating and why. And, you know what I mean? So I was chastised by both. And uh, most of the time, I'd want my dad to beat me because it was a straightforward beating, but my mum would reach for something and beat me with. So it's more terrifying for my mum to beat me because you don't know what she's going to reach for. So it's a matter of um, respect. Yes, I had that. And my children had the same. When other people saw our marriage, this is my personal marriage now, when other people saw my marriage, they thought it was the best marriage out there, but they didn't understand what was going on underneath and how I didn't want to be like the rest of the people that are in our family. You see what I'm saying? I didn't want to, and I see I was being maneuvered into that aspect of that narrative, basically. And so it became a part where we didn't, when we were together at the start, we were, I was proving who I was to their family and she was proving who she was to my family. And at the end, when we just, when it was just, uh, oh, we've got nothing else to prove now. What are we doing this for? We brought out the children incredibly well. We brought up, uh, we, we kept together incredibly well. We had a great time while we are here, but now it's time to move on. And that's basically how it came to an end. In the, my main marriage, I've only been married once. So um, in long-term relationships that I've had, they came to an end because... 
the other person wanted something else or I wanted something else out of the relationship. Uh, towards the end, I found that we weren't giving each other that thing. So you might have the whole ingredients of a great relationship, but it still needs for you to have proper grounding and foundation before you step into a relationship with someone. You need to be absolutely clear about what you want because when we broke up in the marriage I'm talking about now, um, I had already had the meeting, the, the, uh, the, the crucial talk before my first was born on what we were going to do if we ever broke up. We were like, oh, we'll never break up. We're going to be together forever. This is the soulmates here, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, we've got to have this talk. Where do we want our children to go to school? What are we going to be? Because if we ever break up, we're not, we're not going to make an impact with children. And that's exactly what happened like 15, 20 years later. Uh, broke up. And everything was cool. My children didn't even realize we were, we were apart. You see what I'm saying? So um, I'm just saying it takes a lot more than just ingre good ingredients. You have to have a foundation of uh, good upbringing. So you right. understand what to do when it's going wrong. So are you saying that your upbringing and your, your ex-wife's upbringing wasn't good? No, my, my ex-wife's upbringing and my upbringing were brilliant. Mm. But it's her foundation, what she wanted out of the relationship and what I wanted out of the relationship were two different things. Mm. And that's, you know where I mean? but that's where communication comes in, Victor. Yeah, great communication. That's why we understood what, when... It, it, it couldn't have been that out. great. Yeah, it was, it was great. Same. It couldn't have been that great, otherwise you'd still be together. No, no, no. This is right. found... This is found over a long period of time, we had the same thing going on. And then later on, life impacted on it. And we decided, ah, this is it. Exactly. You what apart because you weren't you know, communicating. You drifting apart, yeah. So yeah, over you, a long period of time. Yeah, but it, it doesn't found, matter how. Found. It doesn't matter you how. You don't know that when you're young. Is. Yeah, when well, you're young and you get into a relationship, which is we, what we were, mm -hmm. um, we, would, we were just young people in a new relationship but then over a long period of time it lasted a long period of time because we were communicating well we were fine we understood at the beginning what we were going to do when it was at the end it was like well we've now moved away from each other because life blah 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 and that's the reason why that particular relationship broke down but it wasn't out of lack of communication that's how it kept together for I I would I'm I, like I'm not I don't really want to get into the ins and outs of your personal relationship, but what I will say is this: is that communication is something that needs to be consistent, and when communication is not consistent, it breaks down, and when it breaks down, that's when the issues start to unfold, and that's when relationships break down, and we have to, as people, as adults, we have to take responsibility of that because there is no perfect relationship, it's work. Our parents worked hard to stay together and some of our parents stay together when they shouldn't have necessarily stayed right. together, right? Let's just call a spade a spade. But there are equally sometimes our parents, our relationships, have we've walked away too easily? True. We haven't tried. True. Right, and it's about taking that responsibility and not putting the onus on what it just happened. Oh, nothing just happens, not with two people, because each person is in that relationship and they both have to take responsibility for what the relationship, how it evolves or how it demises. It's both responsibility. Can I just interject quickly? Um, I yeah. agree, I, I, sorry, I agree partly with what Marvin was saying and partly what um, Blaps was saying. I think mutual respect and um, not to undermine each other mm. on the journey is a, a, a major thing. I think, yeah, absolutely. I would say that. Yeah, I I totally agree. I don't disagree. I I, I want to go to over to what Desmond said because I thought it was quite interesting because Desmond was honest enough to say that he didn't grow up with a dad, so that's had an impact. How many of us? on here can be honest enough to say, I know like Victor grew up with, with um, both parents. I grew up with both parents to a point, my mother died. 
So how many on here have had a similar situation to Desmond where they were brought up in a single, whether it's dad raising or mum raising on their own? There are many on here that have had that. I I've had don't a bit know. Of both. I've had a bit of both because obviously my dad died when I was 20. Okay. So we had the mum and dad thing up to a certain degree but when it was important to me to have that relationship with my father that was taken away with me with his death so I found that I the relationships that I picked I think I was looking for like a father figure someone to sort of make me feel secure and to protect me and do all the things that my dad should have done do you know what I mean but I had a lot of love from my mum but sometimes you just look for that you know that difference because you don't have the dad in the house anymore. So I've, I've had a bit of both, to be honest. Thank you for that, Arlene. That makes different. Anyone else? Um, Gavin has said me. Gavin, do you want to unmute? Yeah, yep, well, I, I pretty much grew up in, a, um, well, I shouldn't say a single parent home. It, it was single parent in one aspect, but in another aspect, what we call the extended family, because they were the grandparents. I grew up, well, for one, for one instance, for a part of my life, grew up single parent, that, that's with the mom. And then there was a bit of a tragedy because <coughs> our house was destroyed by fire. And it meant that I actually went to live with the extended family. So there was the... The, the extended family with, with, with from the maternal side with, with um, both, both grandparents. So most of the discipline and, and quite a lot of the moral values were instilled by grandparents. Right. Okay. So you had that balance as well. I agree with the label of the extended family. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. So, so, but th was that, that you were brought up by your grandparents in the Caribbean? Yes, that's, that's correct, yeah. And is that the same for you, Desmond, as well, that that was from the Caribbean? Yes, it was. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Right, the reason why I've let the conversation go the way that it has is because this is really, really a powerful thing, because how we were raised, the environment in which we were brought up in, very much has an impact on how we do everything. And so... Marvin mentioned about a grandmother. Desmond mentions about a grandmother. Gavin's mentioned about a grandmother. And these are those pinnacle matriarchal, patriarchal um, views or, or, or people who have raised us. And now we are the ones mm. who are raising and we are not raising the same values as our Right. Counterparts. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. Right. Okay. But I would say that um, I tried to be guided by um, my grandmother, my great mother, which is my grandmother, mm -hmm. and my mother, because I believe in the female line. Okay. And so uh, I've actually, my book was actually dedicated to my grandmother and mother. Okay. Are you a, an author, Desmond? Well, I have a published work. It's called Stolen Inheritance. So you're an author? Yes, published author, yeah. Okay. So the next time I ask, if someone asks you, are you an author? Absolutely, I, I am an author. Right? That's how you are. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But no, I, want yeah, to show yeah. you, I, I want to show you something. Because don't what we do as black people, black women, black men, is that we play down how our greatness and I just want to just stop there please don't don't diminish your greatness you are a distinguished published author own it own that that's who you are it's what you've done it's an accomplishment that you need to be proud of and we are proud that you've done that he's a good salesman as well say again Mark he's a good salesman as well right Cool, man. Okay. <laughs> right. okay, so you see, <laughs> oh, these things, as it happens, I will, I will pull it out, right? One of the things 
Okay, so we've got single people on here, we've got married people, and we've got people in relationship, we've got people doing all kind of stuff, right? And we've touched on the matriarchal, we've touched on the patriarchal of how we've been raised. We've also been, we've touched on the fact that we are now that generation who is moving forward and raising up the lower generation. We've also mentioned that we are not in our place. We are not in position. And it to come full circle, when Desmond made that statement, these are the reasons why. Because we don't value who we are. There's a group of beautiful kings on this group and queens. I'm not going to uh, leave Arlene out. But yet still we play it down, we dumb it down, we don't acknowledge who we are. But what we are looking for is somebody outside of us to do it for us. And this is the issue, and this is the reason, one of the, one of the reasons why relationships don't work. Because the expectation of who you are is in the hands of somebody else. That's so so your expectation is, so I want this woman to do this, 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 or I want this man to do this, 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 this. And when they don't meet the expectation, you are then disappointed. And in that disappointment, you, the relationship can't work because you start picking stuff. All the time people say you pick and pick until you pick shit. Yeah, that's what old time people, and it's true, because you start picking, 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 <laughs> and you're picking nothing yeah. sometimes. Sometimes it's nothing you're picking, <laughs> but it's because you, you're, you're, you have this expectation that this person is going to be everything for you. And actually, you're supposed to be everything for yourself. That person is there to enhance you, not to make you. They're there to enhance you and you're there to enhance them. And together you build, together you grow, together you evolve. But what happens is, is we have this expectation. So I'm going to meet one man and, and, and the man's, I'm, I'm, my expectation is the man's supposed to talk to me a certain way. Man, this is women, right? And I'm talking for women, single women. So man sees, man sees me, man's coming up, wah, wah, blah, blah. I'm talking like this but my expectation is the man is going to talk to me like I'm a lady and because he doesn't talk to me like I'm a lady I don't give him the time of day and so when I diminish him and put him down he then has this perception that black women are angry black women are this black women are that black women are this and the other and it's because neither one of us are meeting each other halfway that makes sense. Maybe the, the analogy is not that great on this one, but do, do I do? Am I making sense here? So, or yeah. you might meet a woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and you think, oh, this woman is this woman is everything, and then and then she cooks you something, and it tears rotten. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, I cook. Blah, 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 blah. What, you, you mean, why can't you cook? Right, and I'm talking. I'm, we're all black people on here, so I, I, I'm assuming because I can't see everybody, right? <laughs> but I'm assuming that we're all black on here, right? And so the expectation of near enough every black man, near enough, not all, is that every black woman should be able to cook. Should be able to cook, right? This is the expectation. This is expectation. So we've talked about all these things and I didn't mention expectation at all. But as a matter of fact, the, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that pulls down relationships is expectation. Yeah, but sorry. On, on, sure. on, 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 that, on that part though, don't, don't, don't we think that the woman should know how to cook? Because if the man is going to be the... Pro no, no, you're laughing, laughing you're laughing, but... Why, why I say this, now why I say this why I say this is because again if the man if the man was to be I know in this time man and woman is the is is the the breadwinners or you know even the woman will make bring bring home more money than the man but my point is if the man is a man that goes out and looks after his family and goes out and provide the bread for the family then shouldn't the woman learn how to cook 
and feed the child. No. You get me? Is, 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 that, is that unfair? Yeah, what is I don't that? Yeah. I, I, okay, one I, at I, a time, one at a time, one at a time. Let Marvin finish. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can cook, I can cook, but at the end of the day, if I'm going to go out, if that is how the dynamics of my relationship is, that I go out and provide the food, my woman's just had a baby, you know, so she's going to spend how much um, time at home, I'm going out to, 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 to look the money, to maintain, provide and look after. So is that, is that a wrong expectation of me to have a woman that if she can't cook, then at least try and learn how to cook? So we know that, 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 that the kids are eating good food. When I come home, I'm going to eat a strong good food. You get me? Because yeah, I need yeah. my battery charge back okay. as well, you know, because yeah. I'm out there providing the, um, <laughs> earning in the bread. So I must yeah. come home and then cook as well. For, come on, man. That's, I'll, I'll cook, be burning the learn. candles at both ends, wouldn't I? Well, yeah. teach her. You teach each other. Yeah, if you can't okay. cook, but so I'll Arlene can come in. Hold on, Arlene, because Victor's got so Let me let Victor yeah. come in. All right, sorry. Let me hear what Victor's got to say. <laughs> We, the expectations uh, have to be diminished before the relationship starts. And that's where your due diligence comes in. If you're going out dating, mm. looking for a woman, and you say, so, how were you brought up? Uh, I think a man should do all the things for me, everything. Goodbye. Bye. If you meet a woman that says, well, my, I have two children. I have, I have um, my mum and dad bring me up blah 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 you know that she can cook there's obvious yeah. i was brought up by two proper proper parents they yeah. both taught me my mum especially said i'm going to teach you how to sew how to knit how to do everything that a woman's supposed to be able to do and my dad said i'm going to show you how to fix a car how to do everything because i'm not well my mum's point of view was she's not going to have any woman lock down her her son because he can't do for himself and has to rely on her to be mummy sister do you know what i mean everything yeah. for her so yeah. as far as i'm concerned the woman i found <coughs> is going to be a mini me or the similar yeah. to me or is that the same kind of level yeah. of skills so i would yeah yeah, yeah. Val valid, valid, okay. valid 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 point um victor all right, so let's Arlene come in and say what you've got to say. No, I was saying that um, <laughs> I understand the, the going out to work bit, you get me, like, and, and, you know, coming in and there's no food or whatever. But I think if you meet someone and they can't cook and you realise that you teach them or you teach, you know, you learn from the relationship to try and, like, I... I learned, like, I, I cook rice a certain way. Trevor might cook it better than me, do you get me? Whereas I, do you understand me? Which is true, it's happened. I thought I could cook rice until I taste his. So, you know, and he thought he could cook this till he taste mine. So you teach each other, in it. do you get me? Because it, it can't, it doesn't come natural to everyone, depending mm -hmm. on the upbringing. I've, I had to teach myself to cook because my mum did everything for us. So I was self-taught. Yeah, but you're, you sound like you sound like you're willing. You sound like you're willing there, um, Arlene. No, I never you used to cook. All my partners to... are cooked. I've never cooked so much in my life since I've been with Trevor. Because I, I, <laughs> all my partners okay. that I've been with have been big cooks. Yeah, I think so I've aside. I, I've, sorry, but I've on, learned on. to teach myself. You know, I lived in Jamaica. I watched people and I said, oh, you know what? I'm going to try that. And it, it comes out all right. My brothers are all big cooks. Mm. Them, they're, they're, they're women can help themselves, but they're all big cooks. Mm. Mark's a big cook. Yeah, I agree. I think, so, um, yeah, so I think you teach each other because, like, I will learn off my brothers. Do you see what I mean? I watch them and I learn. I learn off Mark. Yeah. I'll ring him up and I'll say, how do you do this? He'll ring me up and say, how do you do that rice and peas thing? It's just we teach each other. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to come to it. If, if, because there's sometimes, all right, the, the mum's at home, but she's got things to do on the road with the kids. She can't always be in the kitchen. Mm. And as much as the man is earning the bread, there's so much a woman has to do in the home to keep the home going. You, you can't always be in the kitchen. It's impossible. So you have to meet each other each way. You wait or wait on the weekend and you do it together and you've got enough for the week. Yeah, I'd agree on that. Um, yeah. 
just quickly interject. I think if you can't cook, you learn to cook, innit? Or be willing to learn to cook at least. Yeah, either side, man learn. or woman. I mean, well, you know, you're getting into a relationship to feed one another in mind, exactly. body, and spirit. Oh, look, before mm-hmm. anyone else comes, Desmond's had his for a while. I just want to hear what Desmond's got to say. Sorry, right, Desmond. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, listening to the conversation and contribution from others, I, I feel a little bit strange because, you see, I enjoy cooking. And mm. I don't know if it's because I like food. And I, <laughs> I, I've traveled around a bit. I've lived in different places. I've tried different foods. I've even eaten snail. Mm. So I, I do like to try um, new recipes and things like that because now that I'm retired, <laughs> one of my pleasures is cooking and baking. I mean, it may not be to other people's standard, but I just enjoy the process of doing it because it gives me a sense of well-being. Right. Yeah. So, Desmond, so if you met somebody that couldn't cook, it wouldn't really bother you? No, I wouldn't. I'm not looking for a cook, otherwise I'd imply somebody. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <All right>. well done. <laughs> or of takeaway. Well, right. Exactly. So, <laughs> I, I use the cooking as just something, just to, just to say, you know, these, the, these are things that I've actually, I've heard, in conversation, oh, I met this girl, blah, 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 in a relationship and found out she can't cook. The expectation, I want to go back to the expectation, mm. the expectation of most black men is that black women can cook. Okay. And if she can't cook, it's like, what do you mean she can't cook? That's an issue. <laughs> but, but on their counterparts, from English, wherever, ever, ever, it's not an issue, right? And the reason why I bring this up is about the expectation that we have on the other person. Because that's on you. You, you're expecting, we as people, we expect, I expect a man to do this, 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 this. If he doesn't do the things I expect, then I become disappointed. And then when I become disappointed, then I start acting out. Because I'm disappointed in his actual He's this, he's that, he's that, and the other. And it works both ways. So what I'm saying to you, we know the components, the key components of a, of a, of a successful relationship. But I'm adding in, if we can manage our expectation, we would have far better relationships. We wouldn't put as much problems in our relationships. We wouldn't feel so disappointed in our partners when they're not meeting those expectations so it's not on your partner remember as you choose that one you're with you know or you choose him or you choose her right so you have to take full responsibility of the for the person that you chose yeah and don't get frustrated with the person because they don't meet your expectation and that's where the communication comes in. That's where you start to, the relationship can start to evolve and you can start to have things like honesty and be able to tell the person that, you know what, I expected you to be able to. I expected that and that's on me. So what is it that you can do? You see how that changes the dynamics of, of any conversation? Yeah, that's true, that's true. That is I true. expected that. So how can I now... OK, so what is it that you can actually do? Because she might not be able to cook rice and peas and chicken or curry good, but she might be able to do a bit of beans on toast for you. Do you know what I mean? She might be able to make, <laughs> a, a, you know, a, a bit of a good old, you know, English breakfast. Or something like it could be anything. It could be anything. She might be able to rustle up some nice sardines ah. with whatever, right? What I'm saying is, yeah. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's about the expectation of what you have on that person. You're then disappointed, so you're upset now, and nothing that the person can say changes because you've had this expectation, and that's on you, not them. True. Yeah. Right, yeah. it's like if I say to you, I'm vexed with you because I expected you to pay my car insurance. 
how could I do that? How can mm. I expect you to pay that without me asking you? Could you, can you, can you, can you do that for me? Did you see what I'm saying? The expectation is if you don't pay it, I'm going to be disappointed, but why should you pay it? It's down to my expectation. I need to get off my ass and go and work and go and pay for my own car insurance. If I've got a car, mm. I should be able to manage it, right? Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm. Victor, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I, I would uh, agree to that to a point, but um, in a different way of looking at it, then, is uh, you can't help who you fall in love with, right? So you fall in love yeah. and then you find out, wow, they're not as good as the last one or not as good as my mum, which is often the comparison. <laughs> the comparison. comparison is yeah. the thief of all joy. Let me just tell you that. Comparison is the thief of all joy. When you start comparing, it's time Believe. to buy. Believe. Yeah, I, you can't I agree compare. completely. So you just say, well, the thing is, right, I don't know who the other female is in this. Well, she's saying she's doing a lot more cooking now. She cooks yeah. more with her yeah. current boyfriend than what she had before. Right, okay. I didn't have so to. What I'm saying yeah. is that, yeah, you should bring, bring them up. Because like, what women do a lot, because every time you meet a woman, you're second, you're number two. You're not the one, number one that has ever been. Right, number one is normally daddy, and then number two is a comparison to daddy. All right, so if you're going to fulfill that requirement, she's going to change you. Okay, you're awesome, you're the best, you're all I can ever be. But you know what, we could do here we, you need to nuance a few things, you need to cook better, you need to treat me um, more often, you need to uh, take care of the kids in a better way. You always bring them up to your part. OK, or push them beyond it. OK, so if there's some deficiency in both of you, both of you should be helping to make that deficiency. Not So if the, the other person can't cook so great because the mama brought them up all the time and that uh, don't worry, I'll cook for you. I'll cook for you. Come over. If your wife don't do anything for you, come over to my house. I'll cook for you. Mummy will take care of you. Mummy's boy meets a woman of her dreams who likes to have a man cook. That, that woman is going to be disappointed, like you say, with this man. So the man, so that woman's responsibility, in my opinion, is to bring up, bring him up to the bar and don't let her become mummy. Do you see what I'm saying? She bring him up to par so he could cook for himself. Because if he's out there by himself after her, he's going to need, and the mummy's gone, he's going to need to be able to cook for himself. So make them as strong as you is what I'm saying. Yeah, we did. We did say that that yeah. you know each one should teach one. You know. Yeah, yeah, teach. Um, Desmond's written. Sorry, Desmond's yeah. written something. Whilst it's important to have expectations, which is right, it's also important to manage those expectations. For example, we can talk about our individual expectations and help each other to manage them in a realistic way. Absolutely. Yes. That's the point. That's the point, and this is why. In terms of. You know, I've been doing the relationship show. It started in lockdown. And every week we would talk about different subjects and people will, will have their say. And I've done a lot of research on this. And, and this is the finding, is that expectation kills relationships if they're not managed properly. Because we meet people and we could be in relationships for a very, very long time. And then all of a sudden we just have this expectation that this person is going to do whatever it is that we want. And sometimes we don't even speak the thing that we expect. We don't speak the things that we want, which is one of the reasons why I said, what do you need as a man? Because when you write that down, when you go on, you can say, you know what? Do you know what I really need as a man? What I'd really need from you is this. And that just starts a conversation. It starts the communication. And it brings out honesty, right? When there's honesty, there's empathy. When there's empathy, there's respect. And, you know, when there's respect, there's compromise, do you know what I mean? And so we start to look at all of these components and they all kind of tie in to each other. But 
Okay, so what I'm saying to you is today, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you start to think about what you need as a man. If you are single, what you are looking for in a woman or a, well, dare I say, if, if you're that way inclined, all right? So if, it, if it's man you're looking, it's man you're looking. I don't, I don't, I have no judgment on that. I'm just saying. So, um, so what I'm saying to you is, is that I want you to think about in terms of your relationships and how you move forward, how are you communicating? How are, you know, what is, what do you need as a man? And, and how are you going to be able to talk that to the person that you're with in a way that is conducive to your relationship to help it to grow? Because sometimes it's not what we say, it's how it's said. And so you know your partners better than anyone else. You know the things that will strike a chord. You know the things that gets their back up. You know the things that piss them off. You know it already. So think about what it is that you need and speak to them have a conversation be loving you know be nice about it and just say what it is because the person that you're with is not a mind reader the woman that you like across the room is not a mind reader and for us and for those of us who are women the men are not mind readers they don't know what we want they don't know we're expecting them to 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 rub our feet when we come home for work because we've had a long hard day or set the bath do you know what I mean and you come home thinking oh it'd be so nice if he sets the bath and then when that doesn't happen you might push up and I'm saying that not that there's many women it's just me and Arlie but I know for a fact that this is what's happened a simple <laughs> little thing like that running the bath has caused relationships to break down Mm. because they're not communicating yeah. at a high level a higher level mm. and so yes yeah, so you know that's me I know we've run out of time mm. um I do hope that you've got something I hope that you've taken down these 10 um key components of a relationship and the other the, the two that we added was the sex and intimacy which we didn't even touch on which was a, a big surprise because I thought at least we touched on that but we haven't because that's a whole big subject by itself, the sex mm. and the intimacy. And um, to be able to, to manage our expectation, you know, and I hope that you will go through and look at it. If, even if it was an argument last night, did you manage your expectation? Were you wrong? Did your mouth fly? Because mm. your ego was bruised because you was expecting something mm. differently from what you got, yeah? Because mm. I want your relationships to work. I want you to grow, I want you to expand. I want you to grow as men. And again, I'm just gonna salute you men. I love you all as kings. I respect you and I want you to thrive. So big up yourself, do not dim your light. You are who you are and every accomplishment you have made, everything that you have done, own it. Stick your chest out, hold your head up high and own who you are as a king. And don't let me see your work with your head down. Thank you so much, Yvonne. <laughs> well appreciated. Um, yeah, thanks, like you said, yeah, like you said, we didn't really touch on certain subjects, but saying that, you're going to have to come back. You need to come back and do that. You're gonna have you? to come back. Like the sex talk, any? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, well, you know me already. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank no worries. You. Thanks a lot, guys, for turning up. And thank again, you've on the show. Enough respect. We'll see you again. <laughs>